We may live in a digital world, but paper, and lots of it, still can be found in most American homes. Just look around your own house. Do you have an overflowing filing cabinet or stacks of paper stuffed into boxes or drawers? They may hide and hold thousands of pieces of paper, but could you find that important document right away? Like almost every life change in America involves paper and money. Divorce, births, marriages, moving, estates, all of them involve money and paper. And that's when you're like, I can't ignore it anymore. I can't shove it in the closet anymore. I have to face it. And then you search Former the teacher Lisa Woodruff found herself in that situation 12 years ago. She was facing a paper tsunami, as she describes it, with decades of paper carefully collected by her dying father. It took Woodruff three years after her father's death to even begin to tackle sorting through the boxes. At the same time, she was struggling and wasn't feeling valued as a teacher. Because I know I'm not being a good mom. I know my house is a wreck. I know that I'm not doing what I, I should be doing with my life uniquely. And so I quit my job and went more into debt to figure out what I was uniquely created to do. To share what she learned, Woodruff started blogging and heard from thousands of people. Her podcasts are equally popular and to date have been downloaded over 8 million times. Women are like, oh, you're telling me I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to have it done by the end of the month and I can learn it. Well, if I can learn it and you will be kind to me, then I will try and as I achieve success, I will want to do more and I'll bring my friends along with me. She turned her paper problem into the paper solution and a business called Organize 365. Join us as Woodruff shares more about her process and how emotions and mental health play a part. Well, welcome to St. Louis, Lisa, and thank you so much for joining us here. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Virtually at least, so we're real pleased that we could do it this way. And I know you're really media savvy, social media savvy, and thanks for sharing what we're doing on uh, Instagram and other places where so many of your followers can uh, see what more you have to say uh, for this year and how we've all survived uh, uh, COVID. And uh, I'm sure business has boomed because we've been in our homes reorganizing. now. One of the things I had to chuckle when I was told about interviewing you, um, I recall as a news anchor several years ago that in one of our episodes and one of our newscasts, we actually took a shot of my news desk because I had piles of paper stacked, <laughs> but for me, it was all organized. I knew where everything was, but if I had to send anyone to my desk, it was a lost cause. Now, fast forward several years later, I'm much better at organizing, but there's always that work in progress. So your book meant a lot to me because of, I'm going through some changes in my life at this time in my life that it really has hit home. Am I your typical uh, customer person that would be interested in, in getting our lives in order or is that anybody? It really is anybody, but here's the thing. Do you remember during COVID where there was the girl standing on the apartment holding up the sign saying, I don't care how long you leave me here, I am not cleaning out my closet. <laughs> and, and everybody sent that to me and I just laughed. I was like, it's so true. It's like, if you don't want to lose the weight, if you don't want to get out of debt, if you don't want to clean out the closet, you're not going to do it. But usually you will clean out your files when you're going through a life change and it usually involves paper and money, like almost every life change in America involves paper and money, divorce, births, marriages, moving, estates, all of them involve money and paper. And that's when you're like, I can't ignore it anymore. I can't shove it in the closet anymore. I have to face it. And then you search for an answer and there really are not very many answers out there. Well, we, before we get to your book, The Paper Solution, I'm showing it right there. There's the hard copy. Um, in the opening, I mentioned that you were a teacher by trade. Mm -hmm. And let's see, it's been probably 12 years ago. You gave that all up. Would you share with our mm -hmm. viewers and listeners what happened at that point? And that was that, was that tipping point. Yeah, I gave up teaching twice. So I was teaching before I had our kids and then I gave up teaching in order to be a stay-at-home mom. That's what my lifelong dream was. And then as the recession hit in 2008, 2009, my father passed away. We you know, went down into the pit of debt. I went back to teaching, but it wasn't a good fit for my kids. So 18 months into teaching, while it was a financial return, it was really hurting our family. And when I was told 
by my administrator, I wasn't a good teacher. I was like, well, first of all, I know I'm a good teacher because I was 39. So I wasn't as swayed by administration at that point. But the second point was, if I'm not being valued here, if, if you don't think I'm a good teacher, then why am I killing myself for this job? Because I know I'm not being a good mom. I know my house is a wreck. I know that I'm not doing what I, I should be doing with my life uniquely. And so I quit my job and went more into debt to figure out what I was uniquely created to do. And I used that teaching skill to help other women at home who were also were drowning in their houses as well. In your wildest dreams, did you ever think 12 years ago or so mm -hmm. that this the idea when you left teaching to just organize your home, that that would become a business? I always knew it would be a business. Oh, you did. So I start. I am a fourth generation female college graduate and entrepreneur on my mother's side. So my great grandmother had four businesses in the 30s and 40s, wow. a floral shop, a restaurant. She was a teacher. So entrepreneurship on my mother and father's side goes all the way back. I always knew I would own my own business. So I thought, Lisa, it's the time. Like, why do you keep trying to work for other people? You're going to be 40. Just get, get going on whatever your business is going to be. I never thought it would have a physical warehouse. I never thought that I would employ other people. I never thought that the reach would be as big as it is, but I always knew that I would be self-employed. Let's talk about that reach. It's like six point some million downloads of your podcast. Is that correct? Eight million Somewhere? two weeks ago. Say that again. Eight million two weeks Eight ago. Eight million. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I mean, so many people out there would be envious of that. So what does that say about our society right now? I think it says two things. I think the reason why the podcast is doing so well is not because I'm a Pinterest organizer and it's not because I have all the answers. I think it's because I'm giving specifically women the knowledge that organization is a learnable skill and that you learn it at different phases in life. And as you go from one phase to the next, you get disorganized because that kind of organization doesn't work in the next phase of life. And I don't say, so get it together and get it done. I say, you're fine just where you are. How about if you take another nap? Let's spend 15 minutes a day. And through that message of grace, and we're just going to keep doing this together until it's done and we're never really done, women are like, oh, you're telling me I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to have it done by the end of the month. And I can learn it. Well, if I can learn it and you will be kind to me, then I will try. And as I achieve success, I will want to do more and I'll bring my friends along with me. Yeah, I like that because there's two thoughts in there. First off, it is something that's daily, or thus the name Organize 365. Duh. And uh, also the fact that it's, you, not, you don't make it overwhelming because that's mm. my issue. Yeah. I see a bigger picture and I go, I see this mammoth, but you mm. make it, you chop it down to something little, which is really the crux of your organi organizing, which we'll get into in a moment. You do call out Marie Kondo, and for those who don't know out there, she is the uh, Netflix guru who had her own show called Tidying Up with Marie Kondo. She's Japanese, and that's important because there's a mentality in that culture teaching that if you properly simplify and organize your home just once, then you'll never have to do it again. Why do you take issue with her methods, and especially with our American culture? So I call her out to thank her first for raising awareness to this organizational in uh, industry that a few of us really love. And most people either think you either can do it or you can't and they ignore it. So she brought it to the forefront and I thank her so much for that. But then the second part is I know so many specifically American women who have a lot more stuff because they have a lot bigger houses than they do in Japan. And we're a paper-based society and Japan is not. And so I just want to affirm for women who had success in their closets with her, because she's great for cleaning out your closet, that there's more to this organizing. If the rest of her organizing didn't work for you or she has no paper organizing solutions, doesn't mean that you can't then go to other organizers to keep going on your organizing journey. And so Japanese actually have digital birth certificates. Did you know that? Like we wow. have, a, yeah, it's a digital country. Like the entire countries, they don't have, they literally do not have paper. In America, like try to go get your compliant driver's license without your social security card. Who has ever used their social security card? Like, do you even know where it is? Yeah. So we I are do. paper. That part I do, <laughs> but you're right. And what is it? It's yeah. like, it's not even two by three. They're itty bitty, <laughs> these cards, right. easy to lose. It's so true. So my husband, so talk about life changes. I, I'm in a different place than let's say when you were back when you were 40 or when I was 40 and dealing with the kids growing up. So we recently downsized from a large family home, you know, many bedrooms to a villa, villa living. Well, I was so overwhelmed, Lisa, with all the stuff in our storage, not only from the children, but from my, my parents, his parents, yeah. 
since passed away, all that accumulated in our area. So I literally hired organizing services, women who came in and physically could help you twice because I was so overwhelmed. They helped me purge twice just because I felt alone and lost. Please share with me the emotional aspect of this process or where I was in the beginning and went, <gasps> and I'd come a long way because that was two years ago, but I learned from it. Yeah. If you can afford it, it's like getting tutoring when you're a kid and you're learning something, you can get a tutor, you're going to get one-on-one -on -one instruction. That's what a professional organizer is going to do for you. They're literally going to clean out the whole space all at once in a matter of a day or a week. Uh, it's amazing if you can afford it. And that's how I started to organize 365. And as I was working with women, I realized they were learning what I was teaching them. And that's when I transitioned into online and doing more bite-sized pieces. But it is emotional. And paper especially is difficult to organize because it's, it's more difficult to organize than a house. Because you can go on Pinterest and look for kitchen organization ideas. You can you know get a magazine about how to organize your closet. But paper, whatever paper you're holding up in front of me, you want to know what to do with that paper. And you think every single piece of paper is a totally different category. And you don't know how to bucket paper and make decisions. And then you run across the paper that is when you had to put down your cat or it's, you know, of a sibling that you've lost, or it's from a time in your life, you know, like my infertility struggle. And you run across all the medical bills from that and all the money that was wasted because we never got pregnant with infertility. And you just stop and you go, oh my gosh, there's so much paper and I have to make a thousand decisions because I have a thousand pieces of paper. I don't know how to do this. So I'm just going to shove it in a drawer. And that's why you have your parents and your grandparents and your great grandparents paper, because you can keep packing it in boxes and moving it to other people's houses. And I was trying to not, actually I saved money by not having to move so much stuff. And it was very freeing to purge. And I'm, I'm still doing it. And two years later, I'm still purging. I thought, I know they're not making little baby papers. How's this happening? But maybe it's what we bring into the house. I totally get that. You write that organization is a muscle. It is a skill that can be learned. I'm quoting you. And as you learn, it will develop more tricks. I think for most of us, that is where to start. Is that where that Sunday basket comes in? Yes. So interestingly, what you were talking about, you said, I purged a lot and then I keep purging and I keep purging more. I, I want to hit that point again. W one of the things that we were taught, which was a myth, especially with paper, is to touch it once. Do you remember hearing that? Like oh, I think yes. it was like the 80s right. and 90s, like yep. touch it once. So when you have it, like you need to process it right away. That is the worst advice we could ever have because mentally we have to start shedding in layers. Like if you only wear 20% of your closet, you physically cannot purge 80% even with a professional organizer. It's too radical of a shift. So this does happen in segments over time. Don't give yourself so much pressure to try to get this perfect or to try to know what to do with everything at every time. Take the things that you know what to do with and get rid of them. And I actually tell you to keep more than you purge in all areas. So if you're not sure if you need that paper, keep it. I'd rather you have it and then six months from now go, why do I still have this? Then six months from now being like, oh, you know what? I should not have gotten rid of that. So yes, the first thing is the Sunday basket. And in that touch it once rule, we would go to the mailbox. And do you remember doing this? I mean, I think everybody did this. Sure. Once you heard that rule, you would start walking back to the house. And you'd be like, okay, well, this is recycle. And this I have to open and pay. Like, okay, so I'm going to recycle as much as I can. Okay, these are actionable. All right, well, I better open them all right now so I can get that away. So now do I get out the checkbook every single day and pay it or go online and pay it every single day because touch it once, right? So the Sunday basket is the opposite of that. It's touch it once every seven days. <laughs> so drop everything in your Sunday basket. And then on Sunday, you process through mail, any other paper ideas, to-do lists that come in during the week and start to batch those things, just like you batch laundry and dishes and everything else. And you called it the Sunday basket because that was the day of the week that worked for you. You would spend what, a couple hours you, right. you, said, you were going through these and, and it helped uh, and you had different files. Now I saw you at a local TV station in Ohio where you lived several years ago on YouTube and you actually had a physical wicker basket then. But now as your business is growing, we can purchase from you. But I will say I, I created my own and it's pretty simple, but it's the same concept. I've got my file folders and Love started it. this as soon as I got your book and immediately went into it and, and it was an immediate gratification, I will tell you. Very simple. I mean, it's, again, no, nothing to be overwhelmed about. So I'll pick my day and for me, it might be Sunday as well. Uh, and then go through it and figure out what, what needs to be done this week. And, and, and then things are ongoing in that basket. 
Absolutely. I mean, there is enough instruction in that book to create your own Sunday basket. You don't need to buy the organized 365 brand Sunday basket. I kind of go back to teaching. There are always going to be people who can watch YouTube, read a book, um, listen to the podcast and be like, oh, I get it. I understand what she's doing and make one on their own. Then there are going to be students that are like, well, if I get the box, then I can get it set up. Like if somebody sets it up for me, I can maintain it. And then there are people in our audience, which the Sunday basket comes with a weekly accountability 90 minute workshop every single, almost every single Sunday. And they need to show up every Sunday and be on there to actually do it because they want to do it with people. Otherwise it's not going to get done. And so as a teacher, I just tried to set up all the different ways. It would possibly help you to create this, the habit because the habit is the key. And that's accountability for meeting every week, just like losing weight for some people. They got to go meet with somebody to yep. weigh in. You're, you're basically having them weigh in with you every week so that, and, and have that community, as you said, because there is strength in numbers, especially if you feel you need that, right? That little push. Um, so you call your business Organized 365. You've got a great website of the same name. And it really is about that continuous cycle, correct? Yeah, just 15 minutes a day is really all it takes. And you slowly over time, you wake up one day and you literally go, oh my gosh, like it's all done. It takes a while. It takes usually at least a year, sometimes more, but it does, it does get to a maintenance mode eventually. And another thing that I like is at this point in my life, I'm looking at the legacy. What am I going to leave right. my kids? I mean, we're not immortal. We're all going to go sometime. So I'm going through the finance part. And you do have in the book, and that chap two chapters were important to me. Well, they all were. But this one particularly, what's the finance side of um, the four folders? Uh, mm -hmm. Can you go four over binders. that one? Four binders, excuse me. Yes. That's fine. Yes. So as a professional organizer, I help people organize their filing cabinets and I was never successful. I mean, I was successful in that we had less stuff and it was well labeled, but I was never successful in that the homeowner could maintain the system ever. Not one time. And I was like, well, A, that's, that's not good teaching if the student can't do it. And then B, in uh, 2016, when we had all the fires in California and all of the different hurricanes that hit the United States, I had my customers emailing me who had gotten their homes organized and they said, we have to evacuate. How do I take the paper with me? And I was like, you don't get in the car and go. And I was like, that is the, how can I have that be my answer? And I was like, we need a portable answer. When you have those life events and you need paper that I mentioned before, divorce, power of health care, advocating for your kids, IEP, things like that. You always need your paper, not at your house. You always need to take it with you somewhere. And if you evacuate, you have to take it with you somewhere. And I was like, well, the only way to do this is for people to completely change their paradigm. So I said, ditch the filing cabinet, forget about filing cabinets. We don't want them anymore. We're going to use binders and you only need four. So it's a financial binder, a medical binder, a household reference binder for your house, and a household operations binder for whatever makes your family uniquely you, your pets, your holidays, all those kinds of things. So smart. And I didn't even think of it in that aspect of fire and get the heck out of the house. Yeah. So true. But it's just so condensed. I love it. Uh, so I got, got the binders working and starting that. Mm. Um, also, the other one that was intriguing to me now, because I'm, I'm going through purging of papers that... I moved from one house to the other, um, is shredding. So I went to my local office store and I said, do you offer shredding? Tell, tell me the process for that. And because I did adopt it from your book, I have trash. Um, and then what, what do I want to actually take and shred? And then do I trust those shredders? I'm kind of nervous about with my social security number out there. So what, what do you suggest? Yeah, everybody is always nervous about this. So yeah. you are totally not alone. And pretty much every office supply store is going to have shredding office depots, staples, uh, all of them will. And then financial services will usually do like a free shredding day if you want to do that. But the price for shredding is usually like $15 for a brown grocery bag or $25 for a banker's box. It won't be more than that. It might be a little bit less. It's a dollar a pound. At our paper organizing retreats, we actually have the shredding company come straight there so that people's papers get shredded right in front of them. Um, so you can find places where you can have it shredded right in front of you, them. But yes, it's very, it's very safe. Now, you mentioned retreats. I was going to get into that moment, but since you've mentioned it, let's go there. You actually physically have people, well, no, I shouldn't say that. You can do it virtually, I suppose, now. But you have other people who teach. I mean, you're yeah. teaching others to teach. Correct? Tell, tell us that process. 
Yes. So I was in direct sales companies for years and I love the community of direct sales, kind of like that online doing the Sunday basket. So now this is very popular with people over 50 because now we're, now we're traveling and now it's a community. And so um, we have 120 different certified organizers in the United States and Canada and 38 of them are certified to do retreats. And yes, now they are virtual and they're online and they're still fun. They're six hours. But when we were doing them, in person and we will be able to in the future it's a hotel event it's 36 hours you literally drive there people have driven 18 hours to ohio with all of their paper and you physically get it sorted with professional organizers on site and shred it and go home with just the the papers that you need so you can finish making your binders at home right again it's that sense of community and some yeah. some people need that i get it where does the digital world come in with organizing now that you mentioned Let's grab and go. And you do talk about how you use um, your calendar on your phone and sync it all. So you've had to grow as, as technology has changed so quickly. Yes. So I try to stay in my lane. I am not your digital expert. And so I, there are so many, there are so many digital experts out there on whatever, if you're on a PC or if you're on a Mac, if you like apps, if you like Google Sheets, what, whatever you want, there are so many people that can help you digitize things. There aren't any other people that are helping you go from piles of unsorted stuff to the amount that you want digitized. That's where I live from the overstuffed filing cabinet and piles of paper to I have exactly what I want and now it's organized in these sections. Right. That's where I, I don't really have great digitizing solutions. I'm sorry. You mentioned it in the book though. I mean, it's, it's, it's the calendar I found intriguing and even that kind yes. of challenging for me sometimes, but, but you know, I do everything off my phone anymore. So uh, that kind of, so, that sort of thing. I mean, mm -hmm. I've also taken pictures of certain documents. I guess that doesn't hurt. Right. Right. And, and the way we have our binders is like, you literally could take all those sheets once you fill them in and just run them through a scanner. And then you just save it as that binder and it would be saved. And you could send that PDF to whoever would need that, like your power of attorney, power of healthcare. You could send your kids their healthcare sheets, things like that. That much digitization I do. I definitely automate my bills and I definitely use a Google calendar when I do my scheduling every Sunday, but I'm not good at like updating digital documents or saving things in files on the computer. I hate to tell you, but I've even forgotten where I filed the digital. <laughs> That's my problem. I forget what I named it. <laughs> where did I put that? <laughs> what are the most common stumbling blocks for people first starting out with the paper organizing? I think it goes back to that touch it once. They want to go from an overstuffed filing cabinet straight into a binder or a digitized solution. And it's actually a bunch of steps. So the first step is you're in the filing cabinet and you need to just decide, am I keeping it or am I getting rid of it? And if I'm getting rid of it, am I trashing it? or am I shredding it? So you have three piles, trash, shred, keep. And you have to go through your entire filing cabinet that way. And it is going to take you a month. Like it's, you just do it like 15, 20 minutes a day, an hour here, nothing the next day. It'll take about a month and you'll get through all of it. And you will literally get rid of about 70%. Then you take that keep pile and you start over again. And then you sort it into, okay, is this something that I would reference in a binder, which used to be my filing cabinet, or is it something that needs action? And so there you're separating for it's going to become a binder or it's going to be in the Sunday basket. Then you take the Sunday basket and you get that going. Then you take the ones you said you were going to keep and you divide those into the binder. So which of the four binders is it or do I need an additional binder for some reason? And then you take each individual binder and create the binders. And this whole process takes three months, six months. It takes a while. It takes a while. Just give yourself the time. It's going to take a while. I was just thinking of you say that. What a gift to give my children when I go. Yes. Everything's going to be right there. <laughs> you think about As it. As somebody who has settled her father's estate, yep. I yep. mean, he did not expect to die at the age of 60. I could tell you that. And he had very well kept files, but it was a lot of paperwork and a lot of stress and a lot of worry. And I've worked with a lot of clients who have settled spouses and parents' estates. And in one case, um, there was a hundred thousand dollars that I found in an extra bank account uh, as we were going through it because the account numbers were so close. The bank didn't even realize that we hadn't identified one of them. They hadn't moved it over into her name and, and I found it and we went and got that money. So it's very important. It's all not only a money saver, time saver. Well, times can, it, it can save money. Um, and I have to say in my purging, I found from my daughter, a granddaughter's baptism four years ago, a $50 bill and a card mm -hmm. that I didn't open. And I also found uh, something from my mother's funeral to the church. 
a donation check. It's see Daisy. So <laughs> there's that. <laughs> but you're right. I was like, because I was busy at the time, threw it in something, but I didn't throw it away. So I guess that's good. So um, let's talk about your podcast and that 8 million downloads and still growing. Um, what do you think the best advice that uh, listeners, followers, followers say they have received from you? It's the grace, the grace that they are not broken, that they can do this, that they were never taught and that step-by-step step they're going to learn to do it. That is, I did not realize I was giving grace. They told me that's what they were receiving from the podcast was actionable steps. Yes. I mean, like it's an actionable podcast, but it's an actual podcast, not through guilt or through you should, or here's another thing for your to-do list. Um, it's just more like a good friend, just like chit-chatting about organizing. So what for you has been the most satisfying part of this journey? Oh my gosh. Having people tell me that they are organized. They never thought they would be organized. Now they are organized and they have so much time. They don't know what to do with it. And then I say, go do what you are uniquely created to do. Because I feel, especially for women more than men, but I feel for women, the housework is never done. And because the housework is never done, we, we read books and we do stuff, but we feel guilty about it. And once the house is organized, your housework reduces by 40% and you literally get extra time. Like the Sunday basket alone will give you five extra hours every single week. 90 minutes on Sunday gives you five hours during the week. I will take that trade all the time. And once they have that time, they have to wrestle with what was I uniquely created to do? And they're like, well, Lisa did a book. Lisa did a podcast. Lisa started a company. You know, I'm going to run for office. I'm going to do this. Like there have been so many organized 365 book babies, like other people who have written books and published them because they finally had the time. Like that is, I mean, that is a teacher's dream is that the student would learn and then go on and do something next that is beyond the teacher. That is, that is the biggest blessing for me. And at the end of the book, Lisa, you do mention that you are pro paper, that paper is powerful and it builds confidence. Please explain what you mean by that. So I think the first time I realized that was when I was in an IEP meeting for uh, one of my students, one of my children. And there literally, there were like 10 people around the table and I had been labeled the problem parent. Anybody with a special needs uh, child has been in my situation. And they're like, oh, Mrs. Woodruff wants this and Mrs. Woodruff wants that. And they walked in there like, we're giving her nothing, blah, blah, blah. And they said, here's our test result. And I said, oh, really? I have a test result that's 40 points higher. And they were like, that's impossible. This result doesn't change. And I got opened up my binder and I got out that result and I passed it to the person. And the mood in that room was like the air went out and they're like, how does this happen? We've never seen this happen before. How? Uh, uh, what happened? Did she have a seizure? Did you do this, do this? And then all of a sudden they were like, okay, well, what can we do to support this? And how can we do this? And what extra tests can we run? And have you had this? And all of a sudden, these nine people who thought I was crazy a minute ago were like, how do we help this child? What has gone on here? And it was that piece of paper. And I can't tell you how many times you just pull out a piece of paper and it validates what you know in your gut and what you know to be true, but people don't believe what you say. They only believe what you could produce in a piece of paper at the right time. It would not have had the same impact if I said, I'm going to go home and find that paper and I'll email it to you later, or I'm going to bring it back to the school the next day. You wouldn't have the same nine people. Like it's powerful and it can, it can help you advocate for those that you love. That's like being in the court of law and you're holding up the paper. Yes. This, I, think I can prove it. We've got it here. Here's the evidence. It really is evidence. Yeah. Uh, and it's tangible. Something we can hold versus, you know, in the air and digitized. And Lisa Woodruff, thank you so much. The book is called The Paper Solution, uh, What to Shred, What to Save, and How to Stop It from Taking Over Your Life. Wow. Given such a gift to all of us. Again, folks can go to your website and they can follow you on Instagram. Please share with us how else we can sh uh, see you. Yeah, so we have a free private Facebook group, Organize 365, if you want to get in the community and have the conversation. And I personally love Instagram. I do Instagram stories every day and I love conversing with people there as well. And Victoria, thank you so much. Thank you, Lisa. It's been a pleasure and thank you for helping me as well.